Today, we're going to soft mod a PlayStation 3. This means the entire process is software based and requires no mod chip or hands on technical skills. Once modded, the console will be capable of playing PS3 games straight off the hard drive, emulation of other consoles, homebrew, and many other features. This is well worth doing in the modern day and something I've personally wanted to do for several years. The PS3 was the first console I completely paid for myself, so with a personal connection, I want to take it to its full potential. There are several methods to soft mod a PS3, and the one you choose will depend on your console's model. In this video, we'll be installing CFW, which stands for Custom Firmware. This method will work with all fat models and most slim models, the latter of which we'll be modding in this video. Slim models that are sure to work are those with the model numbers that start with CECH-20 and 21. Some slims that start with CECH-25 might not work, but there is an easy way to find out before you start the process, which I'll show shortly. Unfortunately, no super slims are compatible with this method. But fret not, there is another way. It won't be covered in this video, but there is a method called PS3HEN that works with super slims. A quick search should get you on your way. Goodbye. For everyone remaining, this video focuses on models with the official firmware 4.91. As of uploading, this is the newest available from Sony by several weeks. This video may not be useful if you're watching in the future and a later version exists. Fair warning! To complete this soft mod, you'll only need two items. First, a blank flash drive formatted to FAT32. You'll also need a computer. Maybe something a bit newer though. Let's get started. Boot up your console and head to the settings menu. Choose System Settings and ensure automatic updates are turned off. Sony appears to release a yearly firmware update that seemingly does nothing but brick custom firmware, so I'd advise keeping this off. While we're in the Settings menu, select Date and Time Settings and ensure that it's set to automatically and also set via the internet. Next, create a new user profile for this soft mod. This can be called anything and is only temporary. You can delete it afterwards if you wish. At this point, I would plug in your flash drive just to make sure it works with your PS3. It should appear in the photo, music, video, and game menus. Once you're confident that the flash drive works, head to the network menu and choose the internet browser. Bring up the menu with the triangle button and select tools. We'll need to delete these four options to completely clear out the browser. Annoyingly, the menu will exit every time a selection is chosen, so you'll need to choose each one individually. In that same menu, I would go to the Bookmarks option and add a URL that we'll be visiting several times over this process. The URL is as follows. The www dot is not necessary, and you can choose whatever title you wish. Something memorable and catchy, you know? This is the PlayStation 3 toolset, and is what will facilitate this soft mod. Once you load the web page, a program will automatically run. Let this do its thing until a maintenance costs window appears. Here, you can donate to the developer, if able, to thank them for this otherwise free service. Next, select the System Manager tab, and again, let the website do its thing. Here, we have the definitive way to tell if the console is compatible with this soft mod. If so, a green tick will appear next to the text CFW Compatible PS3. Assuming that's all fine, lastly, we'll back up the PS3's flash memory to the flash drive. This is super important. You can use this file to revert your console to factory settings if anything goes pear-shaped. In that same menu, click the flash memory heading and choose save flash memory backup. The flash drive will be listed as a USB. Once that's been copied over, you can turn off your PS3, pull out the flash drive and head over to your computer. First, we need to download a few files. You can find this linked in the description. On GitHub, we need PYPS3 tools. Click on the link to the standalone package and then click on the download icon. For simplicity, I wouldn't download these straight to the flash drive. Next, head to psxplace.com. This is the landing page for the custom firmware. Scroll down to the download links at the bottom of the page. I would recommend the firmware labeled as PEXCEX, -E but there are several options. No BD stands for no Blu-ray drive, while no BT stands for non-operational Bluetooth. Download those if applicable, although they're not yet available as of making this video. For everyone else, the top option will suffice. Both files will need to be unzipped once they're downloaded. 
Insert the flash drive and copy the dump.bin file. This is the super important backup of your PS3's flash memory. I'd recommend saving this somewhere safe, like in the cloud. Additionally, navigate to the PYPS3 checker folder you just downloaded and unzipped. Paste the dump.bin file in there as well. Next, drag and drop the dump.bin file onto the file named drag and drop your dump here. A program will automatically run, checking the dump file for any errors. If there are errors, do not continue. There will be a risk of turning your PS3 into a doorstop. My check ran fine, but I've read if errors do appear, it's recommended that you reinstall the official firmware on your PS3 and retry the dumping process. Next, navigate to the CFW folder you downloaded and unzipped and copy the PS3 folder to the flash drive. You can delete the dump.bin file at this point too, assuming it's been backed up to a safe place. Before we continue, we need to ensure that the CFW has been downloaded and extracted properly. On the flash drive, navigate to the PS3 folder and then the update folder. Inside will be a file named ps3update.pup. Follow the link in the description to a web page titled md5 file checksum. Drag the .pup file onto the web page where it states drop file here. You must do this from the flash drive, not where you originally downloaded it. It will hash the file and output a string of numbers and letters. Navigate to the original download folder and open a text document called md5. The string should match what's on the web page, taking into account that it's not case sensitive. If it's not the same, re-download the CFW, extract, copy to your flash drive and repeat this process. Once you're happy, plug the flash drive back into your PS3. Head back to the browser and use your handy bookmark to navigate back to the PS3 toolset. Again, let it do its thing and then head to the system manager. Click on the flash memory patch, followed by load patch via HTTP. Again, let it do its thing, and once it's verified, the window can be closed. Now listen up, you. This next step is the point of no return. Godspeed. Please, no whinging in the comments if you ignore this advice. There's always one. Again, select flash memory patch, but this time, select Apply Loaded Patch. Read this message carefully, and once you understand, click Yes. At this point, leave the console alone. It will take a while, so be patient. The console may brick itself if you interfere in any way, so no touch. Once this process is complete, reboot the console. Once that is done, navigate to Settings and System Update. Choose Update via Storage Media. The version should be called 4.91 Evil Nat. Accept the terms and conditions, and again, leave the console alone during this update process. Put the controller down and be patient. It may take a while. Once it's complete and the console reboots, we're done. You can tell it worked by the extra selections that will be available, like the package manager in the game menu. To kick things off, we're going to install a file manager called Irisman. This is super useful because it supports NTFS drives. FAT32 only supports files up to 4GB in size, which will quickly become an issue since most PS3 ISOs are usually at least 15GB. I will leave a link to the newest version in the description. You can transfer the install file using the same flash drive if you like. You can also now delete all the previous files we used for the soft mod. Back on the PS3, plug in the flash drive and navigate to the game menu. Select the package manager, install package files, standard, and the install file for Irisman should now show. Select that and Irisman will install. Once installed, you can launch it from the game menu. To transfer large ISO files, I use this old external hard drive. Something like this is recommended since it has a power source. Other drives may not be able to source enough power from the PS3's USB port to properly operate. It's also USB 3, so the transfer speeds will be bearable on the computer side of things. The PS3's USB 2 port, however, can't be helped. On the first boot of Iris Man, use the menu to adjust the screen and then say yes to the prompt. Once in, press the start button to access the menu and choose file manager. On the left hand side screen, navigate to the PS3's HDD and create a folder called PS3 ISO. On the right hand side, navigate to your portable storage device and the folder where the ISOs are kept. Press the triangle button to select the ISO and choose the copy option. 
It will automatically recommend copying the file to the PS3 ISO folder since you already navigated to this on the left hand screen. Once copied, hold down the start and select buttons together and RS Man will jump to the game selection screen. Select which game you'd like to play and the PS3 will boot back into the traditional menu. From here, you can select the game as per usual. This is a great way to run backups of your games without using the disk drive. It's also a great avenue for game preservation. Games like Trash Panic were only ever released on the PS3's PSN. Sony have been threatening to shut that down for several years now, and even though I've paid for it, there's no guarantee I will have access forever. You can also use this process for PS2 and PS1 ISOs. Just name the folders PS2 ISO and PSX ISO instead. Although I personally had issues running Pepsi Man, so I downloaded another popular file manager called Multiman. This ran it with no issues. There is also quite a lot of homebrew available. I'll link to a great repository in the description. This can be hit and miss however, as is the homebrew life. There are plenty of work in progress projects, proof of concepts, and seemingly complete games that don't work at all. I'm not sure why, but it could be that the newest firmware is not supported. Your PS3 is now capable of so much more. It can be used for single player cheats, FTP clients, RetroArch, and plenty more good stuff. Get out there and explore.